Hey, hello and good morning, everybody. Another fabulous, fabulous Friday. We have a great webinar for you. This is Jeremiah. Hello. And this is going to be the first in a multi-part session on SketchUp and our, our interaction with SketchUp. So uh, being the first of that and um, with a lot of upcoming new functionality coming uh, very soon, I did want to use this opportunity to remind everyone, do please uh, feel free to send us uh, your suggestions, questions, um, issues, wish list items, you name it, um, as we uh, are purposely using this webinar to jumpstart exactly that conversation. We want to know what additional functionality we need, what things you're struggling with. We're going to be showing you a lot of techniques. SketchUp, just like AutoCAD, can be automated in about every way imaginable through through plugins like ours that we'll be showing. And so we just need to kind of gauge where to put our future development efforts in extending our plugin, uh, adding more buttons, adding more capability. So we do need that feedback from you guys. So do please feel free to chime in, shoot us an email, um, and even here, use the Q&A box there at the bottom. You're welcome to type in, you know, any question at all, I'll be sure and get you an answer and, and get that over to Amanda. So um, that all being said, and the session is being recorded as they all will, so if you do have any auto issues or have to step away or just want to know, it will be available on the website uh, as soon as uh, Monday, so for you to be able to watch again. Um, so that all being said, I'm going to hand this over to Amanda. Okay, and thank you, Jeremiah, and good morning to everybody else who is joining us today. Uh, so we've got a great series of webinars, uh, like Jeremiah said, scheduled to basically fully co cover the possible workflow from AutoCAD through the LandFX SketchUp connection and to a working 3D model in SketchUp. So basically today, uh, we're just going to cover the basics of what you can do with the tool. If you haven't already, um, I highly recommend watching Daniel Tall's SketchUp Basics webinar that we have archived on our website. Um, if you go to webinars and scroll through the archived webinars, you'll be able to find it there, or you can use the search uh, tool in the documentation to find his webinars. Um, Basically, that one, it covers a lot of the basic tools in SketchUp, and he does a really great job of breaking down exactly how SketchUp works, uh, putting it in ways that you can really visualize, and uh, how to think while you're in SketchUp. Um, in today's webinar, though, we're going to mostly be covering, we're going to recap a lot of those tools that Daniel covered, but we're also going to go a little bit deeper uh, with some of the other basics, like how we recommend that you set up your SketchUp interface in order to work efficiently, and exactly how to integrate your existing CAD plan into that SketchUp, how to bring it over. Um, so basically, uh, in this webinar, you should come in with some experience with SketchUp's tools and some experience with LandFX's AutoCAD tools, uh, like planting and reference notes. Uh, if you don't, that's okay. Hopefully, this webinar will inspire you to go a bit deeper into those uh, two different areas. In the basics, we're going to cover uh, preparing your CAD drawing for the export, transferring the line work over with the connection tools, building up a simple plan with simple flat level grading, and bringing in your planting and reference note model or ref note models, and basically creating a nice little 3D world to present and help your client visualize your plan. Uh, next week we'll be doing the intermediate segment and then in the weeks following we'll have the advanced segment where we're going to build on the skills that we're going to um, establish here today and we're going to bring those further into SketchUp and add in workflows for a more complicated grading and gradually we'll build your skill set up to be more, uh, get yourself into more realistic modeling. Um, so. With all of that, we'll just close this out. And we have a plan here that we've started for a commercial building. Um, 
these plans uh, after this webinar, once it gets recorded, we're going to save these plans and make them available for you to use. Uh, so if you're watching this as a recorded, uh, there should be some links uh, below the uh, webinar interface to download these plans and you can kind of work along with the um, with the webinar and for those who are watching this live you can kind of go through this uh, later along with me uh, after you pick up some tips from watching it live first uh, so the first thing i want to do though is for this plan i want to bring it over to sketchup but first i want to make sure that my sketchup is properly set up for me to be able to draft in it so i wanted to go over a few uh, additional sketchup basics so here's the interface. Um, the first thing you'll notice is that if you've just downloaded SketchUp and just downloaded the, uh, the connection, uh, my toolbars are going to look here different than what you would have out with out of the box SketchUp Pro. And I'm going to go over uh, the interface that I normally use and you can kind of take it or leave it, but hopefully it helps you to think about how you want to set up your toolbars so that you can use SketchUp a lot faster and have a faster workflow to make this whole thing profitable uh, and easy to use in a, in a normal project workflow. So first off the bat, uh, when you start SketchUp, you're probably just going to see the getting started toolbar. And uh, if you need to get to your toolbars, you can just go over to here to view and toolbars. So the getting started toolbar, if I just open up that, that's probably going to be the one that you're going to see. And it's probably going to be off on this side over here, if it'll go. Um, normally what I do is I just take that and close it out and get rid of it and start building up my own toolbars. And I'll show you which ones I use. Normally I, um, I go with the large tool set on this resolution. It's a little cut off, but I don't use the tools at the bottom of here anyways. So that's okay for the purposes of this webinar. But I normally like the large toolbar set. Uh, it keeps everything nice and compact and together instead of having each of the individual toolbars for each of these. I like having them all together and making sure they're always all together. Uh, the other things that I like to have on here is layers, and that's this over here. It makes it very easy to change between the layers that you're drawing on in SketchUp and uh, also to change uh, different items, see what layer they're on really easily, and then also move them to a different layer if you need to. I also always have measurements turned on, and that's this down here. And that's really great for being able to see uh, how long the things that you're drawing are, and also to quickly type in uh, different measurements as you're drawing. I like to use the sandbox tools. We won't be using them in this webinar, but uh, we will be using them in the intermediate and advanced, and that's up here. I like to have the section tools. That's the these three right here to be able to quickly make sections when I'm doing uh, modeling details. Uh, and then I like the shadows over here so I get a bit more control of when I want to put on shadows in order to uh, set the mood of a, of a 3D plan. I like to have that control nice and ready and available. I also like to have uh, the standard toolbar is just uh, this one here with all my save buttons, copy paste, undo, uh, redo all of that is right there. Uh, styles, that's this one, crucial to have to quickly, um, you'll find that if you get into bigger models with a lot of materials in them and especially photos, you'll probably want to switch uh, from having shaded with textures off to just shaded to take those textures out and increase performance. And sometimes you just need to see on in 3D on an X-ray on the fly. And so that's really great to have up here and available for you to use. And the last one that I always have up here is views to quickly go between plan view, uh, front, back, especially great in using with my section tool here when making details and wanting to export things back. Okay, so that, those are all of the toolbars that I use. And the second thing, um, that if you're new to SketchUp uh, or you've used SketchUp a, a little bit is uh, just the hotkeys and shortcuts that you need to use in SketchUp. You cannot use SketchUp 
and continually click all of these buttons. They're nice to have around uh, if you really if you're really in a crunch and you just uh, had a, a brain freeze and forget the hotkey. They're great to have right there, but you cannot rely on them. You need to know the hotkeys. You need to memorize them because it's going to take you about three to four times longer to draft in SketchUp if you're not using the hotkeys. And that's just plain throwing money out the window in terms of um, if you're trying to do this to make a profit. So I'm going to really quickly go over all of the hotkeys that you should absolutely know and use pretty much 100% of the time. The first one is spacebar. So if I have something selected, one of the other tools selected, um, I usually use spacebar like I use escape in, uh, in AutoCAD. And the reason that I use spacebar, I like to go back here and it's great for selecting things. So if I have that and I go back to spacebar, I can select the face, I can select the edges really quick and uh, easy to move around. The second one is E for erase. That gets up your erase tools and especially knowing the uh, memorizing the shift and control commands for erase. Those are especially important if you have, uh, you make another line in here, we'll go over the line tool shortly, and, uh, and you want to erase, but you want to keep that line, but you want to kind of smooth it. You can use either shift to just hide the line or use control to smooth the face. So if I hold down control here and do that, it'll smooth the face, but the line is technically still there. Um, the next one, of course, is the line command. So that's L and you cannot uh, get away without knowing this one. It's really fast. You can go in here, go back, select other things, go back to line and uh, keep drafting and keep moving. The next one is R for rectangle, absolutely crucial for obvious reasons to be able to draw things very quickly. And then uh, with rectangle, while you're doing it, remember I have the measurements down here so I can see how big my rectangle is going to be. Another crucial thing that you have to remember is if I want this to be a certain size, I can do that in here. In AutoCAD, you would have to press D for dimensions and then input the uh, the measurements one at a time. In SketchUp, it's all at once. So I just kind of let go of my mouse here and then go five comma five. And that's going to make a square of five by five in whatever units I'm in. I'm currently in meters here, but if you're in feet, that would instantly make a five foot by five foot. Now, if I did want a five foot by five foot, but I'm in meters right now, that's also really easy. I can just go like that and type five apostrophe for feet and then five feet, and it will make a box that is exactly five feet by five feet. So that's a really handy tool to be able to use, especially if you say you're drawing your uh, your units are set to inches, but you want to quickly draw something in feet and you don't want to extrapolate the inches up in your head. You can just really type uh, really quickly type five feet into there while you're in inches and it will draw in feet. Same with uh, if you're drawing in millimeters and you want to uh, make something in meters, same thing, just put an M at the end or an MM for millimeters. Really, really easy that way. The next one is going to be circle, so that's C. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, arc is A, really Good tool here, so I'll just make an arc. So you, uh, the arc by default with the A command is going to be, uh, they've just added a few more arc tools that you can play around with. But by default, it's going to be uh, start point, end point, and then out. And that's going to make your arc along here. And then a really cool feature, and if you haven't seen it before, if you do an arc to an arc, you'll see here that it's highlighted in cyan. And what that means is that it is perfectly, it's going to be perfectly aligned with that other arc. So that's a good tool if you need to uh, draw a curved area in SketchUp and you want it to act more like a spline. Now you can do any kind of arc off of here that you want, but you can always drag it back and as soon as it hits cyan, you know it's aligned. The next one is going to be move. 
I'm going to go back to select and select something. I normally select something uh, before I try and move it. And I go to M for move. And so that's just going to move it around. And equally crucial is copy. So on here, just tap control and it turns on copy. Tap control turns on copy. Tap control again turns off copy if you made a mistake. Next one's going to be push pull. That's P. And we're going to be using this a lot today. So you can just push that up. And then there's a few more commands in here that are easy, uh, make, makes different tasks easier. When you're pushing up from a surface that's already pushed up, you can uh, tap control to toggle on making a brand new face and leaving the old face behind. Or pushing up. So that's uh, keeping the old face up, making a new face. And I'm just tapping the control here. OK. Next one is going to be Q for rotate. Easy enough. You can just uh, grab something. Let's grab that one. Tap Q, grab a spot, grab a reference line, and you can rotate this around. Uh, if you need to rotate on different angles, uh, different um, either the green or the red axis instead of the blue axis, um, it will, the rotate tool will uh, go to whatever axis uh, it's currently aligned with. You can grab onto an axis if it's uh, slightly different, hold shift and bring it back. Should do that. I think it's my Mac key, my Mac uh, keyboard. It's not uh, recognizing the shift, but that would hold that protractor. You can also, if you click on here and then pull up, you can align it with uh, different ones. So that's really handy. OK, next tool. We'll go through these really quick. F is for offset. That's, uh, that's basically that tool. It just uh, creates an offset just like you would in AutoCAD and creates a new face around it. And a uh, very handy tool. Uh, next is going to be S for scale. I'll just grab that. And you can easily make this bigger, smaller. I use scale really frequently. If you've seen any of my other SketchUp um, tools, I almost always use scale to make uh, use with components to make things uh, longer or shorter, but keep the component aspect together. Um, T is for tape or measuring tape. And that's really easy just to figure out how big some things are. It'll be down here in length or it will also highlight in that yellow box. And the last one is going to be G for make component. Uh, and that's not to be confused with group, G for group. It's G for make component, uh, although they don't really make that distinction very easy with the hotkey choice. Uh, but basically, you'll want to grab what you want to do, tap G, and that brings up your create component. So those are your essential, essential hotkeys that you need to know in order to draft in SketchUp and draft quickly, which is the whole purpose of this um, simple workflow is you want to be able to draft something quickly and not add too much time into your general workflow for bringing a, uh, once you finish your planting plan and want to bring it into 3D, because usually um, we don't always build that into the budget very well. <laughs> and so you want to spend as little time and get as much profit out of the whole process as possible while wowing your clients with a 3D model. Um, the one, there are a few things uh, when you're, that you need to watch out for when you're working in CAD uh, and going to SketchUp and kind of going back and forth between each other in a workflow. Uh, first, in SketchUp, there's no two-letter shortcuts. They don't exist. And you'll find that really quickly. Uh, find that out really quickly when you go to copy something and actually accidentally press CO and end up in orbit. Um, or you want to do a rectangle and you accidentally type REC and you get to circle. Um, there's no two letter command, so it's it's just something that you're going to get used to, but just think about it uh, while you're going through it. And then uh, the second one 
which can be very, very confusing uh, when it happens the first time. So I'm going to give you a heads up on it. Uh, in SketchUp, if I go back to my select, in SketchUp, uh, holding down the mouse wheel is orbit. Holding shift and then holding down the mouse wheel is pan. If we go over to AutoCAD, holding down the mouse wheel is pan. Holding down shift and holding down the mouse wheel is going to be orbit. Um, I can't do it in FX, uh, FXCAD 2015, which I'm really thankful for. Um, but if you have full AutoCAD uh, or uh, especially AutoCAD Civil 3D, uh, where you do have 3D capability, what's going to happen if you press shift and then mouse wheel and try and pan because you just came from SketchUp, it's going to orbit your plan. Uh, and cause it, and normally you're working in 2D here in AutoCAD. Um, so obviously that's going to mess things up and you are going to do it. I still do it years in. Uh, it's just a habit and going back and forth, it's really hard to break and switch over to the other way of doing things. Uh, so while you will definitely screw it up, um, the, it's good to know how to get back out of it you can really quickly, if you catch it right away, press uh, undo, so a control Z to undo and get back to the previous um, orientation of your CAD plan. Or if uh, you didn't quite catch it and you find out later when you try and label things and you get a DView twist error, uh, you're going to want to go and start creating a UCS and flatten it back out. Okay, uh, the last thing in SketchUp that I wanted to cover, just uh, how to uh, do a fast workflow would be these windows over here. You can see I have them all stacked up. Uh, you can access these by going over to Window and then uh, going in here and opening all of these. I almost always have these ones that you can see um, over here and stacked. Entity Info, Materials, Components, Styles, Layers, and Scenes. Those are the ones I use most often. Sometimes if I'm using it frequently, I'll throw shadows and fog in there. Uh, and basically, if you want to do that, you just open it up. And then you just pop it onto another one. And it will put itself in the stack. And I always keep that over to the side. I never close them. The only thing I'll ever do is minimize them so that they take up less space. I very frequently have entity info always open. Um, it's hardly ever minimized for me, uh, mostly because if you uh, watch me in AutoCAD, I'll also almost always have the properties palette up. And that's just so that as I'm clicking around and doing things and going through my workflow, it's keeping up with me and always showing me exactly what I have selected and what I'm doing and all the properties about that. So I can quickly, at a glance, if I'm trying to figure out what's happening in front of me in this 3D environment, quickly look over, see exactly what I'm doing, what material is applied to it, uh, what it is, what's the area, what layer is it on, all of these things. Very crucial to have open. And then I can just... Um, pop down any one of these windows that I want as I need them and then pop them back up and go to another window. Okay, so that's pretty much all that um, I want to cover. Uh, but the important part, uh, the last, last little tidbit I want to say is uh, that you need to draw most of the time not in SketchUp, but in CAD when it comes to your landscape plans. As much as possible, you want to draw in CAD. Uh, that's because CAD is much, much more accurate than SketchUp. And a, you can usually draft a lot faster in there, for, um, especially for layout plans. Um, the only times I would draw line work in SketchUp would be to either finesse the model with lines that you wouldn't normally see in AutoCAD. So they wouldn't make any sense to be in AutoCAD. So I'm going to draw some lines to kind of really build up my SketchUp model. Um, I would also do it if I'm modeling an actual component like furniture or a fence or things that I'm going to detail. Um, and basically things that wouldn't be a part of the basic layout line work for the plan. 
or I'd also draw, I also draw in SketchUp if I need to fix up errors that happen from the import process from CAD. Importing from CAD is um, an art, not a science. A lot of things get messed up in the conversion and all you can do is just clean it up. And that's gonna be a lot of what we're going, we are going to go over today. Sorry, how to best clean up your plan as we go through. Uh, SketchUp, I find, although I did show you that uh, neat little arc tri uh, trick, it doesn't handle uh, accurate curves very well in most situations. Uh, and basically just in those three situations is where I would draw in SketchUp. So with all of that covered, we're going to move and uh, kind of go through this workflow. So the first thing I need to do before I start going into SketchUp, I'm just going to close this down. I'm going to start in my plan. See, I just did it right there. I held down shift and went to pan. <laughs> um, luckily, I don't have 3D in this one or that would have uh, I would have had to undo. So we're starting in our plan. I have all of my uh, planting set up and I have all of my um, I have a few reference notes in here for some tables uh, that I've saved in. And basically, as I go through this, I've already set up all of the 3D components for each of these. So if I go into block data for this, you can see I've set a 2D component, uh, a 2D symbol, sorry. I've also set the color symbol in here already. You can change that just by clicking on this. I've also set the SketchUp symbol. So uh, this is a newer feature that we've added into our plant edit dialog, where right in the drawing, you can set the SketchUp component that you want to be set on that plant. So that's really, really good, especially for a uh, fast workflow working from templates. You can set up the SketchUp the proper SketchUp model in your template. And then as you import into your different projects, that's already set up. So that makes the workflow into SketchUp that little bit faster. And uh, if you don't have a model set to, uh, or a model symbol component set to your plant yet, this will show up white without a component in here. And then you can just click on that and go in here and find your component. Um, you can go down here. I went to deciduous trees and went in and found one. Um, now we do have names attached to these, but don't let that restrict you. Uh, if you don't see your plant in here or you go to, uh, let's see, where's Gliditzia? You go to Gliditzia and you don't like the options that you may be given here and you feel that one of the other options in the library is uh, much more representative of how you feel a Gliditzia should work for your style, you can go ahead and choose that one if you want. Um, I'm gonna stick with this one because I do think that that uh, looks pretty accurate to what the tree looks like. And I'm gonna choose that in, uh, in the intermediate workflow. We're gonna go through assigning your own symbol, but for the time being, we're really really simple workflow quick and dirty get it done and uh, still have it look nice i'm going to go ahead and choose that one so i'm going to press ok and that's going to be applied to it now i've gone through for all of these plants and already assigned sketchup symbols also for my reference notes I, uh, I picked these up from some of our manufacturers that we have in the library that already have 3D models associated to them. Um, you can also assign uh, 3D models to your reference notes. We'll go over that in an, uh, the intermediate workflow. But for now, uh, I know that this table has a 3D model already assigned to it, and so does this garbage can. And so what's going to happen is when I go over into 3D, all of these symbols are going to convert to their 3D um, versions. So that's really great. But before we can do that, I don't have anywhere to uh, put them. If I were to throw these over into SketchUp right now, they'd all come in on a blank white canvas with no ground. So I need to make the ground first. So, 
the first thing that I need to do is uh, prepare for it. So what I'm going to do is uh, my base is actually in an XREF. So I'm going to go ahead and open that XREF. And this has all my line work. And what I've done is I've gone into this base and I've already cleaned it out a bit. Hopefully your base was drawn properly um, in, in AutoCAD and very cleanly. What you want to do for a base to bank it the easiest on you for when you import it into SketchUp is you absolutely want polylines closed if possible. Um, try and avoid lines and arcs uh, and um, definitely uh, you want them to be closed because the biggest problem when you go and import a plan like this into SketchUp is that some of the, uh, the lines may not totally reach each other or they may cross each other without actually meeting at a certain point. This is a function of um, I guess some bad AutoCAD drafting habits that can get a bit sloppy. So what I've done, that was all rampant in this drawing. So what I did was go through and uh, I basically used uh, some Q select. So if I type in here, Q select, and that brings up this dialog box and you can see all the different object types in your drawing. So I had some surface types, I wanted to get rid of those for sure because they were not going to um, they were not going to be representative of the line work that I wanted bringing in, into SketchUp and would probably complicate things. Uh, there were some points. I wanted to get rid of those because both surfaces and points are actually going to follow through uh, in if you export and or import into AutoCAD. Um, so basically, you can just select something. So I'll just select something in here. I'm not going to delete the circles though. And then you can go down here and select all, say OK, and that's going to go ahead and select all the circles in your plan. I have a, a few around here. And so you can go and see where they are, delete them if you need to uh, for any object in here. The next thing I used uh, extensively in this plan to clean it up was P edit. And uh, cho choosing the multiple option, press enter, and that allows you to basically grab everything in the drawing or as little as you need. Uh, right click, and the first thing it's going to ask you do you want to convert lines, arcs, splines to polylines? And you want to say yes because you don't want to import things like splines and arcs and lines into SketchUp. You want it to be as clean as possible, and my best suggestion is use polylines. Uh, so you can go ahead and uh, say yes. That's not going to affect me because I've already done it. This might come up if you have a lot of things in here. Yes, disregard guard the draw order and then it's going to give you some other options so join is something that I use a lot uh, sometimes I'll join it while in the P edit and sometimes I'll just uh, as I go through and I'm fixing things up I'll just use the J command uh, if I type J for join and then I can choose any polylines I want and join them together. So that's an important uh, key piece is that you can't join together lines or arcs. That's why you want to convert them to polylines. Okay, so that's really uh, crucial for cleaning up this drawing. Um, I also uh, use overkill in, in my drawings. That command is great for getting rid of unnecessary line work duplicates that can really mess up a SketchUp um, and if you have a lot of duplicates uh, it might even um, break up a line in ways that you don't want it to and uh, you can just choose whatever you want in here this is probably going to come out clean because I already did it on here I usually just accept the default settings and uh, oh there were five duplicates in there that I hadn't gotten the last time so now I know those are good. This drawing is getting a little bit smaller. Um, the next thing I want to do um, is to save this as, do a save as, 
because I don't, uh, I'm doing all of this to my, to my base file and I'm going to clean it even more as we go along. I don't want that to show up in my drawing. I like how my base looks in my, in my actual drawing for plotting 2D uh, for my plans. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm basically moving this into a base file for SketchUp. So I'm going to go ahead and do a save as, go into my folder structure. Got my little folder structure here for my CAD file. I like organizing everything all together. So this is where my base file is currently lying. I'm going to go into my SketchUp folder that I've created. And I usually have these folders already set up with, uh, and I'm going to save my CAD base for SketchUp in here. I have it already saved in here, but I'm going to go ahead and overwrite that. You can name it SketchUp Base if you want. It doesn't matter too much. Yes. Okay, now that it's saved, I'm going to go ahead and do a few more drastic things, like cleaning up this so that I only have the line work that I want to import into SketchUp. So I'm going to go ahead and delete pretty much all of this stuff. And here we go, it's almost all gone. This curb I want to keep. Great. I'm just going to keep this edge of the curve. I'll grab those lines. Great. Just start grabbing those. Okay. So that's basically everything that I wanted. I'm going to trim this out so it doesn't stick out like that. And now if I do a zoom extents, we're just going to check that to make sure I got everything. Uh Oh, I didn't get everything. So I'm going to go and grab that. Or if you find some things up here and it, and it really zoomed out, you can't see anything. You can do a control Z uh, or C, get back to your model the zoom that you were at before and then do a control all and deselect the things that you want and that will highlight everything else that's out in the distance and you can just quickly delete that okay so this is looking pretty clean i'm pretty sure it's ready for me to start putting over into SketchUp except for one thing and that's very very crucial important thing we want to make sure that uh, everything is going to be properly lined up in both this drawing and in my planting drawing so that I know that once I build up all of this in SketchUp um, it's going to in my planting drawing when I import my plants they're all going to line up as well um, so the way that you want to do that is you need to use UCS and we have those tools already good to go very easy to use so the first thing I'm going to do is pick a point in here that I'm going to want everything to snap to so I've already chosen one here you can probably see it but I'm going to redo this just so that you can see what I did here I'm going to choose that corner of this building to snap to. You want to be able to snap, uh, have your origin for your UCS in a very recognizable spot. So not off in the distance down here. You want it to be on a snappable object so that you can easily tell if the, that point is lined up here and it's, uh, and it's over in our other drawing too that you know for sure that they're going to line up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in this drawing. I'm going to make a new UCS. I'm going to snap to this point over here. Press F3 to turn on snap. Great. It wants me to specify an x-axis direction. So I'm going to choose a line that's horizontal on my plan. If I don't see a line that's horizontal on my plan and I want this orientation for my plan, I can just quickly draw a line uh, with ortho to create an x-axis, uh, but I happen to have one right here that I can click and use. Now it's asking me which, ways, uh, which way is up. That's what it means by specify y-axis direction. It's asking you which way is up. Well, this is up, not 
this is down, this is up. So I'm going to click here. Now it's asking me for a name. I'm going to call this SketchUp just so it's really clear. OK, that's my SketchUp orientation. OK, and it's going to zoom out to the extents of that. Perfect. And it's all set up X, Y on this axis right here. I'm going to do the same in my planting plan. I've already done it here, but I'm just going to really quickly redo that for you again. I'm going to snap to that corner. Critical that you snap. I'm going to choose the same line that I used in my XREF, and you can choose an XREF line. I'm going to show it which way is up. I'm going to call it SketchUp. Great, it's going to zoom to the extents of that, but that is all set up. Okay, so my UCS is aligned with both. That's perfect. Now the next thing I want to do before I start bringing all of this over into SketchUp is I want to double check what units I'm in. So I'm going to type units, double check. Yep, I'm in meters, and this is going to be important once we go over into SketchUp, I'll show you. Okay, so now we're going to start um, bringing over, uh, exporting the CAD layers. So this is the first time that we're actually going to use the SketchUp connection tool uh, in this process, but it's very easy to be able to send over the layers. Uh, so if I just go into here, oh yes, I need to set this drawing uh, to my project that I've, uh, the same project as I have with my planting. That way, when I start importing things from SketchUp, SketchUp's going to remember, or the connection, land effects connection tool in SketchUp, it's going to remember what project you're in. And so basically, it's like uh, creating a folder. Here's my project here creating a folder on landeffects.com uh, that is for this project specifically for you only, nobody else can see this, just you and everybody who is using your support ID. And um, it's going to create a folder for that. It's going to send all the information into that folder. And then when you go into SketchUp, it's going to pull the information from that folder. So I'm going to go ahead and open that so that my line work goes into the same folder on landeffects.com that my planting is going to go into. Now you've got all these options. Export design, we're going to do that later. Import design, just uh, keep that in mind that you can do that. If you don't have the SketchUp plugin, that's where you find that. If you need, still need to download the SketchUp plugin and install it in SketchUp, you can just find it really quick here. That'll bring you to a web page where you can download it. And we have send layer, so I'm going to click on that. And basically, it's asking me to select a source object. And what it wants, what it's going to do is every time I click on a line, it's going to uh, find what um, layer that's on. It's going to find all other line work in the drawing that is on that layer. And it's going to turn that layer off to indicate that it has saved all of the information for all of the line work on that layer. So if I click here on the curbs, it's going to confirm to me that layer C curb has been sent to SketchUp. Great, so it's up in that folder in the cloud. And I'm going to say OK. It's going to turn off the curb layer so I know I don't need to click on it again. I'm going to go ahead and send all of these. Pave, a wall. I'm going to, sure, I'll send this. Send that. Send it all. And you can pick and choose, of course. And last but not least, the sign. Great, I got everything that I wanted to send over. I'm going to right click. It's going to bring me back to here, and I can just say cancel. And it's going to turn all those layers back on. OK, just going to save this. And now we're going to go into SketchUp. So I'm going to open up a blank new drawing. Once you open up SketchUp, you might find that um, it's it's got the uh, you might have the grass and the blue sky that's perfectly fine. 
I have my default template set to uh, the engineering because I like the white uh, better than the green and blue sky. I find the green um, conflicts with what I'm trying to draw as the ground sometimes, but that's a completely a preference thing. Um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to check what the units are in my SketchUp model to make sure that they match what the units were in my AutoCAD. So I'm going to go up into Window and go to Model Info. Great, they're in meters. If you're drawing in decimal feet, uh, you'll want this to say feet. If you're drawing in inches, you'll want it to say inches. Just make sure it matches exactly the units that you have in your drawing. You'll find uh, just kind of air checking if all of once you get to importing trees, if they're all bunched together and really close, you probably have uh, the wrong um, unit matchup in between the two drawings. So you'll have to fix that, uh, delete all the trees and then re-import it. Great, so that's good. I'm gonna close down this and a quick brief overview of the SketchUp connection. If this is the first time that you're opening it, you're probably going to need to uh, do your land effects settings and just kind of put in your support ID and uh, find a library location. This is, uh, we'll go over this a bit more in the intermediate uh, webinar. Um, and if you need to update your version, you'll be able to update it here, but most importantly, you need your support ID in here in order to um, be able to connect with that project that you just exported. So now I'm going to set this drawing. I'm just gonna save it. Go save, go back to my folder. Basics, CAD. Great, I'm gonna go into my SketchUp and then I'm gonna save it in here. So I'll just call this tester. You can call it whatever you want. I have a few things already set up here that we're gonna go through uh, just uh, to be able to speed up uh, the process a little bit for you to be able to see it all in one webinar. So uh, I've saved this. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, set my project. You can see my project is right here on the list. Click it and now it's set. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, the import layer from CAD button. So I'm going to click on that and you can see all of my layers that I exported are nice and in here. So I'm going to go to a wall, we'll import that for the buildings. We'll import curb. I'm gonna leave these two for now. Uh, pave, we're gonna go, there we go, the sign. I want the wall and I want the header, there we go. So as it's imported, uh, you can see that it started to make faces, but it uh, hasn't completely done it. And that's mostly just a function of SketchUp and AutoCAD and how they talk. I told you before, sometimes what you're going to get is things that look like they touch in AutoCAD aren't touching here. So uh, you can see over here, this was touching in AutoCAD, but here it's not. And the way SketchUp works is that if a a line is ending in a face, it's not going to register. It's not going to allow a face to be created when there's a single pointed line that's not closed off, that's in the middle of that face. Uh, so what you need to do is close everything off. Now, you can do this by hand and basically trace over all the line work, which is what some tutorials out there will tell you to do. And I say, absolutely not. That's going to take forever. Um, what you want to do instead is find yourself a good extension uh, to be able to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do before we get to that extension uh, is I'm going to draw a rectangle using that R key. And I'm going to kind of get my uh, ground here. It didn't create a face because it has a lot of unended lines in here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw end some of those lines, some of the more obvious ones. And while you're drawing, oh, that's, let's go to line, not rectangle. While you're drawing, you'll find that uh, line tool will 
if it hasn't closed a face, it will continue. If it has closed a face, it will stop. So uh, in this case for this uh, curb, it didn't actually close the face, so it's continuing. So I'm just going to tap L again to reset that and snap to that line point and pull that over. We are going to go a little bit over an hour in this webinar, and that's just the nature of the beast. And while I'm doing this, uh, Jer, are there any questions? Have any questions popped up for the process that we've done so far? We have had some questions. Oh yeah, no, no, we've definitely had some questions, and uh, I've been able to answer them. So you know, you can uh, uh, just kind of keep on going. But uh, reminding anyone that uh, if there is anything, uh, if man is ever going too fast or you, you missed something, just feel free to ask a quick question, and I can chime in there for you. Yep, I can definitely go over things again. I know this is. Uh... It's a lot to take in, and it's definitely something that you kind of uh, you will need to practice on all of that. So basically, what I've done here is I've created um, my road out here, um, but it still hasn't done everything. So what I have is a great extension that I found um, up here. It's called Edge Tools Squared. Uh, great extension. You can find it on the um, extension warehouse if you go to window and then extension warehouse and I just went to edge tools and that's going to take a little while to search through the database and it's right here you can go in um, and if you're signed in like I am you can uh, install it by clicking the button up here you can also uninstall if you already have installed uh, most of the extensions in the warehouse are going to come with a uh, great little tutorials on exactly how to use it uh, for this one I found it great for cleaning up this very simple uh, CAD work. Other extensions that I've uh, I would use for say more complicated CAD work that has some problems with it would be um, there's some uh, great paid tools out there. I think they're like 20 bucks, but they're completely worth it in terms of the the time it will save for workflow. Uh, there's uh, extend close lines and intersect overlapping. I use those like crazy on a, on a really big CAD plan because there'll be so many of those cases where it almost touches but it doesn't quite so those are great tools for this for that this is a free tool uh, he does give a donation if you want to because he makes some great tools um, and we're gonna go over and just grab it tools edge tools and I'm gonna do find edge gaps you can see it found all the gaps of little overlaps and it's almost reaching so what I'm gonna do is just go through and click on all these little bubbles and it's gonna fix this up for me mostly I still need to do a little bit of work but this is really taking a lot of the leg work out of this plan sometimes they won't go away if you hover over them it'll say no solution within range that means that you need to go in there and tell it what it needs to do so click all of these great Okay, I'm going to do a space bar to go back to select and exit out of that. And now I should be able to just go through and start tracing things. Sometimes you need to create temporary lines to start closing in these faces and then use the erase tools and get rid of those lines later and the face will still remain. Uh, things like that just going to have to do a line and I'm going to go straight through and that close it off because mo more than likely at this little intersection right here is where all that problem was happening with that face. Uh, so that's problem right there too. Grab that. Excellent. So now that's all separated. I can get rid of that line. So this is basically how you're going to go through and, and clean all of this up. It takes a little bit of work. You're going to go through and just, let's see, 
excellent that one created and then I'm going to run that tool again and just show you what happens with those ones that it couldn't fix find edge gaps was what I was using okay so there's one so I'll go back to my selection tool I'm going to just take this line and I'm going to pull it right out Right, that should probably have gotten that. Perfect, they're all lining up now. There's probably another gap somewhere in here, so I'm going to do that again. Uh, find edge gaps. Okay, there's probably one in there. And I'll just connect that in. So you're going to go through there and through this plan and continue trying to find where those edge gaps are. If you're finding a problem surface, you can always just uh, go right through edge to edge and it'll probably fill it in. If you find that surfaces aren't separating properly, just go over and try and separate them manually. Great, that one's out. So you can keep going through this. So I am going to just pull out a more completed one version of this. If you see this pop up, fix for sure, always fix. And that's uh, that will almost always pop up if you're going through a CAD workflow, uh, CAD to SketchUp workflow. So I'm gonna go back to my SketchUp and I'm gonna pull out just cancel that. wrong one pull out faces that's the one I wanted great so this one I've gone through and I've created all of those faces making sure that they're all separated uh, and nice and clean so the next step that you want to do once you have a nice clean and ready to work with uh, completed face plan you're going to want to put materials on first before you start getting all wild and crazy with push pull put on your materials so i'm going to drop that down i'm going to close entity info just to make more space so you can see and i've got quite a lot of materials in here um, you can find these online uh, SketchUp has some great material bonus packs. If you Google that, you'll find the instructions on how to get them yourself. So you'll probably notice I have a lot more asphalt and concrete, et cetera, uh, materials in here. And you can get those too if you just uh, Google it and just find the process on how to load that into your installation. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some ground covers and some cedar wood chips and put those in all of my planting beds. Great. Click here so I can zoom in. And now I'm just going to go over to vegetation and grab some grass and start filling in some grass areas. And this, this process is going to go a little, uh, pretty quick as I go through. But we're going to skip this as well and kind of go to the next step. So uh, as you're working on this, you can just keep going. I like asphalt old as opposed to asphalt new. I find the black is pretty stark. Um, and then go to concrete and just fill in all of those for concrete and sidewalks and you can keep going. Um, and then for this uh, model, I'm also going to just go to colors and grab white and color all my buildings white. Great, so uh, you'll want to continue on with that and make sure that every face in here is filled with the appropriate color. And we're just gonna go over to the next step. Once you have all of your materials loaded and ready in your plan, you're going to want to start uh, again. This is a basic uh, webinar, so we're just gonna go through the basic workflow. We're not gonna get too crazy with grading. This is just a simple commercial building. Uh, and there isn't too much grading going on. It's going to be mostly flat. So mostly I'm just going to do push-pull. So uh, grab P for my push-pull tool. And uh, when I do this, I don't try and pull up all of the surrounding area. I find it's because I'm going to have to pull up 
uh, this sidewalk, this, 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 everything, I'm going to have to pull it all up. I usually find it's much more effective to push down roadways. So I'm going to go down and put that at 6 inches or 0.15 for the height of my curb. Great. And now I'm just going to double click and that's going to uh, do the same measurement for push pull and it's going to send all of these down. And you're really quickly getting a 3D world in here. Perfect. So that's basically everything I need. Oh, these two. Great. And now that that's done, I'm going to push up my buildings. Now, if you've gotten a model from the architect, you can go ahead and uh, copy that component into here and push it here. But this is a simple, we don't have a model from the architect, but we still want to visualize this without putting too much work or effort into it. So I'm just going to push up a white block of a building for just a building mass. I'll just give that an appropriate height. And I'm going to pop up all of these buildings. Maybe this one back here is a little taller. Great. Okay, so I'm going to go through here and just continue to pop up anything that needs to be popped up. Uh, I believe there was a sign over here. And I'm double clicking when I want things to be the same size. I can also push pull and type in a height, depending on what units I'm in. I'm in meters. And double click for the same one. So that was, I, I typed 0.45 and then pressed enter. Uh, now drop curbs are a little bit more tricky. You're going to have to do a little, little bit of line work and that's what I meant by finessing this plan for something that might not be in AutoCAD. So for this plan, um, it's going to want to, um, it'll try and break wherever. So if I try and pull this down right, right now, you can see it's kind of breaking with its own little mind just wherever it wants to go and I press down sorry right uh, off the bat when you have something highlighted and you want to push it down sometimes it won't automatically go and it'll just stay in the red or green axis you can t press the down arrow on your keyboard and that will force it to go on the blue axis to move um, so that's going to break where it wants to break so what I'm going to do is try and break it where I want it to break I'll pull that and go out to here and go out to here and now I'm going to force it to break where I want it to break. So that's simple but it gets the idea across and I'll go to erase and I'll just uh, I'll soften and smooth this one. So I'll go to control and highlight those and that just smooths it out. And we'll smooth that one out too. Okay, so you can go along and continue doing that over here, anywhere that we're crossing and we want to drop down for uh, accessibility. Um, and you can continue to push anything up, like this garbage enclosure uh, that needs to be pushed up. All of that, great. And just keep going to build up this model. So basically, as I go through this, this process should probably take about uh, an hour or a few hours, but that's certainly not that long at all once everything's together. Keep double clicking. Cancel. So here I have it all pushed out and it's ready to accept plants. And this is actually the fastest part in the whole process. All I need to do I've already set up my UCS uh, in this location and I know it's proper in my planting. I know that my, uh, in case you changed it, double check that your uh, units in your model are set to meet or whatever unit that your planting plan is in. Mine happens to be meters, but if it was feet, you would just choose feet in there. Go back to your planting plan in here and it should already be set to your project, you're going to go to presentation 
And now we're going to export the design. It's going to take a little while and it's going to give you a little notice that it's done. And it's again taken all of this information, put it out to the cloud um, with all everything that you have in your drawing and it saved it there. Important to note, uh, the import export, it doesn't stay in the cloud when you import it. You always have to re-export it before you try and import it again. Key point to note, it doesn't stay there. So I've exported all of that out. I'm gonna go back to my pushed out one. There we go. And I'm <clears throat> just going to, sorry about that, go over and uh, import my plants from CAD. It's also going to bring over any reference notes that I have set to a 3D, 3D model. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. You can see I've already set all of these models uh, for my plants, so they're already showing up in here. I don't need to go through the process of trying to click them. However, if you decide here that you don't actually like what's in here, like for instance, I don't like that one, um, I can go in here, go to perennials, and choose a different one if I want. I feel like it should be that one instead for this plan. So you can go through and make those changes. These are my reference notes down here. Um, they don't have slides attached to them. That's why they're not showing up in here. Uh, but they will pop in once I populate my plan. So I'm going to go ahead and click Import. And it's going along here at the bottom bar. Ta-da, there we go. We have a full plan. And now it's taking a little bit of time for me to orbit around it. Um, if you stay in one spot, it'll eventually get uh, its texture back. I have a nice combination in here of some 3D trees and some face me trees, um, as well as 3D and face me plants. And you can see in here that uh, it pulled in my little seating bench and it also pulled in i'm just going to uh, hand across it also pulled in my little garbage can that i put in there so this is really quick and um i'm this is basically ready i can go ahead and go to export and export a 2d graphic and create a jpeg and save it in there with uh some some of my views I can create some scenes so if I like if I navigate and I find that oh this this scene right here really shows off this uh, planting plan I can go into my scenes uh, click plus add that scene create scene and that's saved in here I can give it a name so I can always go as I uh, navigate around I can always go back to that scene and retake uh, that photo. Um, I can change some things in here. So um, if I want to, maybe that positioning of the uh, of these trees isn't quite meshing with what I want it to look like. I can move these using the move tool, move them around, and then I can re-export this back into CAD. So I can re-export my planting plan back into the cloud and then use that import plan uh, tool back in AutoCAD. I'll, I'll let you play around with that when you uh, go through and test this model out for yourself. Um, but that's a really cool feature that you can dynamically have a say from uh, a, what you want your planting plan to actually look like by seeing it in 3D and making the 2D match what uh, what kind of changes you make. You can also add plants into this plan. So if I think, oh, I really need a fourth tree in here, I can just click here and place a tree, grab that tree that I want. That was actually a shrub. Grab that shrub, place it in. I'll just place it here. And now if I re-export this back into AutoCAD, I'll do that really quick. Escape out of that. I'm going to turn off textures so that this uh, goes a little faster. I can re-export this back. 
go back into my plan for the bank, go back to presentation, import the design, and you can see I now have that additional tree or um, you just uh, sitting in here where I placed it in SketchUp. So that's a really cool way to dynamically change your drawing. Uh, we're just going to, so that's, that's the basics of uh, this basic workflow. And now we're going to really quickly go through some of the other tools, uh, basic tools that are in um, these land effects SketchUp connection toolbar. So we've gone over setting our project. We've gone over settings. There's a help button in case you need to go to our documentation and read up more on all of this. Um, there's our import layers from CAD, import plants, that tree. You can also place the site amenity that you might have in your reference note list. Uh, there's another really cool feature here that we showed off a lot because uh, it's really great for if you want to communicate something like a, a popular route or um, kind of communicate to your client uh, different information on the plan. Um, you can click on that. It gives you different line types. So you can create a 3D line type. So maybe I want to make it very clear on my plan where those um, pedestrian crossings are. And I'm just going to navigate over to here. Go in and pick a spot. Make that about as wide as my pedestrian crossing is. And I can throw that over. And really cool tip, once I've got that lined up, great. I'm going to escape out of that command. Seem to think I clicked. Um, I'm going to actually choose all of those. I'm going to make this a component, this base. I should have done that before. I'm going to group that with the G and just call that base so that uh, things don't get confused with it. Great. Create. Perfect. I'm going to select those and move those down and just a little bit above do that 0 0.01 above and now I have a, a nice crossing for my sidewalk so you can kind of use the tools in land effects that way to do things really quickly um, you can also look at the information so, okay um, select an object and look at the information for that tree. It's all right here in SketchUp as well. You can change the symbol width if it's really not working for you in SketchUp. And you can also uh, create a plant legend right here in SketchUp if you want to kind of create something uh, to show. Just put that in. It's catching up with me. <laughs> Try that again. Didn't seem to recognize. The origin, it just, I wonder if it might be very, very small. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe the scale's just a little off. Ah, uh, meters. Always does it to me. <laughs> um. We'll check in, and uh, but you can check on the documentation on exactly how that tool works. I apologize for not having it work for you live here in a webinar. <laughs> okay, so I believe that basically concludes the basic workflow uh, for the Land Effects Connection uh, SketchUp Connection. Uh, so we took a simple commercial planting plan and we brought it into SketchUp. This whole process should only add, a, like, say one to a few hours to your overall project workflow if everything is set up properly and the CAD line work was drafted correctly to begin with and say if you already had all of your 3D models set to your trees um, that should be if, if all of that's already set up and good to go this becomes uh, this just gets faster and faster and faster. I would say conservatively, you can't really uh, get out a 3D model in under an hour, but you, sh you can prove me wrong and try. Um, 
obviously any any making any kind of additional plan is going to take at least a little bit of time but the key goal is to minimize that so that you can uh, give your client a great 3d visualization of this and um, like for this you might put a price tag on it but you want to make as much profit margin on that as you possibly can so spending less time obviously is a really great in any way that you possibly can um so we'll now see if there are any questions uh lingering on this or things you'd like me to cover again or general questions about the whole process. And then uh, after all that, I do also want to remind everybody that's watching that we will be following up this webinar with an additional uh, intermediate and advanced workflows to bring your models uh, a little closer to looking like real life as we go through. OK, so uh, yeah, any we did questions? Get, um, we, yeah, we did. We actually got several people who basically asked the same question. Um, and for now, it's going to be a little bit of, well, trust us, well, we're going to be showing this in the next one. Um, but a lot of people asking, well, what about contours? Uh, what would happen if you had contours? I'm, I'm over and over again, contours, contours. And the answer is, yes, the plants uh, will still come in on the surface, just like they did here. Um, but they will be at the surface of the contour. So in the next webinar, where we're going to have some uh, contours, or is that, I don't know if that's the third one, Amanda, but... Yeah, it's, um, um, I'm going to do contours in advanced. Okay, so um, yeah, if you do want to see more of the contours, uh, stay tuned for that, the third in the series. Um, but just for now, know that um, you can see those plants actually came at the uh, the surface underneath them. So if it's very high or very low, it's going to be at the surface. And uh, that was um, all the questions for now. Um, any other comments, like I said, feel free to shoot us an email. And um, other than that, everybody, have a great weekend.